after the death of his father. And Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam happens to be the most historical of all religious personality according to Encyclopedia Britannica. No doubt whatsoever about him that Muhammad could be a fairy tale, most historical, solid down to earth figure. History starts with him. The change of the Arab nation starts with him. The whole Arab world come, come, becomes known to the world for the first time in the history since the creation of the world. Since the creation of the world, the Arabs were an unknown people. Nobody was interested in that human rubbish. Nobody. Alexander the Great passed them by. The Phoenicians, the, the, the Persians passed them by. The Egyptians passed them by. Nobody was interested in that human rubbish. Nobody. It was after Muhammad that all of a sudden they become known and they become masters of the known world through the blessings of Islam. Before that, unknown. Muhammad is the most historical of all religious personalities. The mission of these two respective messengers of God, Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures, opened his mouth at the age of 30. And by the time it was 33, three years time, they say that the Jews hanged him on the cross, did away with him, as a false prophet, as an imposter, as a liar, as a cheat. They hung him on the cross, three years. The prophet of Islam opens his mouth at the behest of God at the age of 40, and for the next 23 years of his life, he reformed his people. 23 years. His mission is 23 years, Jesus was three years. And the records left behind through the lips of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Allah Ta'ala gave this book. Muhammad left this record behind, the Holy Quran. A complete record. Everything that the Muslim ought to know, his duties and obligations, are all given in this book. You don't have to fumble for knowledge, for direction. It's all given to us. In the case of Jesus, Jesus himself, he did not write a word in his lifetime, not one word. In his lifetime, nor did he dictate any, to anyone to write a word, and nor was a word written, not a, not one. What we have today is a record, long after him, written down by persons called Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, James, Paul, and on and on. And that record is a record about Jesus. It's not his record, it's not what he said. This book, this is the Holy Bible. In this Holy Bible, it's called the Old, there is an Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament is supposed to be, according to the Christian missionaries, that is the Injil. You know, we Muslims, we say we believe in the Injil. Of course, we believe in the Torah, we believe in the Zabur, we believe in all the Holy Scriptures originally revealed by God Almighty. Among them we name Injil. So they say this New Testament is the Injil. But let us see what they, the Christians themselves, they say. Here is a Bible, very beautiful Bible, very expensive Bible, this particular one here. This was presented to me by Dr. Shorosh. If you see the tape of the debate with him in the Royal Albert Hall, you'll find him, you know, with, he starts with his Arabic introduction, beautiful introduction, Arabic is his mother tongue, and he says, you see, we Arabs, when we go to meet a friend, we don't go empty-handed. We must present them with something. And this was in a green parcel, he handed it to me, I didn't know what it was, but I took it. But I found this very, very helpful, very valuable, invaluable. See, this Bible here is unique from many points of view. In this, that this particular Bible is called a red letter Bible. I don't know whether you heard. How many of you heard about a red letter Bible? Yes. One. Hardly anybody. Two. Red letter Bible. You know what is a red letter Bible? I have to explain to you. Red letter Bible. You see, everything that Jesus spoke is in red. So it makes it very easy for you to know which are the words of Jesus. Because in the New Testament, there are 27 books. 27 books put together make the New Testament, the so-called Injil, the so-called Injil of the Christian. 
But these 27 books, how are you going to find out, sift out what Jesus said and what he didn't say? What Jesus said, you got time for that? Who's got time for that in modern times? So they have, the Christians have made things easy for us. They now, they put everything, every word of Jesus is in red, the rest is in black. So it's two color job, black and red, black and red. It also makes it easy for us now to find out to what extent is the New Testament the words of Jesus. So it's only about 10%. 90% has not got nothing to do with Jesus, 90%. Not even out of the 27 books in this particular one, this particular Bible is the King James Version, and they tell you in the preface, this is the fifth major revision. You know what's a major? You know minor, small, major, big. The little children, they can't testify in court because they are minors. Major, grown up. Major, big. So this is the fifth major revision of the King James Version. King James, one of your kings here, in 1611, he had this Bible produced. It carries his name still today. But this particular one, by now, five times they made changes, big changes, not tiny things. Major. That's what they, they say, and the Englishman knows what he's talking about. When he says major, he means major. <laughs> After five major revisions, they still call it King James Version. You know, amazing.